Good evening, uh, everyone, and welcome to our transition evening. My name's Mark Wignall. I'm the head teacher at Downlands, and welcome to you all. Uh, what a shame that we can't get together uh, at the moment due to the circumstances which have affected me. And sorry about the background, I am currently self isolating, so I'm recording this from our garden shed. Um, so yeah, sorry you can't be on site. We are all very much looking forward to the time when we can meet up face to face. Uh, and we're hoping that can be in September. We do have events scheduled for September. So we would really hope that we can get together for, for example, for year seven information evening, where we can share even more information about what goes on at Downlands. We also have an evening six weeks in, where in normal times you get to meet uh, your child's tutor for uh, an update and a check on progress and again we very much hope that that can go ahead too. Uh, I'm really sorry that we have to record this video also. We work on Teams and unfortunately uh, we can only do a live event with people who are part of our organisation and you guys aren't part of our organisation yet. If we can't get together face to face for year seven information evening, you will be part of our organisation and hence at least we can do it live and then you can put questions on live chat. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, that are raised by anything that comes up today or anything at all, then you can email us on transition at downlands.org and we'll get back to you as soon as possible and we'll also do a document with all the frequently asked questions. Uh, at the moment, unfortunately, our transition day was cancelled at the end of this term due to the rising number of cases in our area. And in fact, we have got a fair few cases at Downland, so we didn't think it was right to hold that event. But we're looking to hold the transition day on the first day back, which is the 6th of September. And that'll be a day when only year 7 and 11 are in the school and we can show the youngsters around the school, show them the ropes, talk about what we do at Downlands. Uh, and again, that is dependent on one or two things. And one, and one really important thing is mass testing. So we, we know that we have to carry out mass testing. We've been given that information by the government. We don't know the details yet. And we're trying to work out ways that we can get everyone tested before they come back on site and that we could then carry on with transition day on that Monday, the 6th of September. We're really proud of transition at Downlands. We've got a wonderful uh, environment in which to do it which is at the back of the school and includes the open air amphitheatre and the uh, artificial pitch at break times and we're also in the process of constructing a canopy over the back of the sports hall near the amphitheatre where we can serve food to the year sevens uh, and they stay in that area uh, until they feel confident to move out of it um, there will be much more information about what we do about transition coming up when we have talks from my colleagues. So first talk will be from Mr. Davis and he's head of curriculum, he's a deputy head. He'll talk to you about how our curriculum structures work. Then Mr. Odlin, who heads up our pastoral teams. And then from Mr. Stokes, who will be the new head of year seven. And as I said, we are really looking forward to meeting you guys at some point, and also really looking forward to meeting your youngsters. Uh, we missed you at open evening, we missed you this summer, and We'll ultimately we'll be catching up at some point which we're really looking forward to. Your primary schools have said what a wonderful bunch of students we're getting and things are changing for us as we move forward. We know for example there will be no bubbles as we come back next term and that's good because we can offer our full Downlands curriculum and we're looking forward to being able to offer the full Downlands um, offer in terms of what goes on with our extracurricular clubs. Now, recovery in terms of when we're coming out of the pandemic, I think that the biggest thing that we can do or the most important thing we can do is get the students back into the classrooms and just make sure that we teach them really, really well. Now, we've got a great track record of doing that. So standards in classrooms at Downlands are, are very strong, hence the great academic outcomes. But we also have fantastic support for students you know, who, who need it, whoever needs it. Great, a great deal of support. And we also are putting in place some wonderful catch-up programs. So if there is anyone who's got behind over the course of the pandemic, we've got some great plans in place so they can catch up. But I referred to extracurricular. One of our big 
big priorities is what we call character education as we move forward. So we're actually increasing capacity within the school in terms of staffing to deliver more and more character education. And it really is, I think, one of the most important ways we're gonna come out of the pandemic. And what it is about is giving the students those skills and those experiences that they need a to be really successful learners as they go through their time at downlands so have they got a growth mindset are they resilient independent do they have empathy do they have all the skills that it needs to a be a successful learner but also then b when you leave downlands with your great set of qualifications can you then be successful in your career in your life as you move forward and character education gives everybody the chance to be as successful successful as they possibly can and we're looking forward to really working hard on that. So that's, um, that's it from me. I look forward to seeing you at some point and thank you for listening and do ask questions if you're not sure about anything. Cheerio, bye-bye. Hello, uh, my name is Rob Davis. I am Deputy Head at Downlands. Uh, and my job now is to try and make some sense for you of the year seven curriculum. In other words, what your child should expect uh, when they come to us in September. So, what you want to know is, is what's going to be different. Well, one of the first things that's going to be different is that your child is probably used to uh, one teacher teaching them probably all day and probably all week. Uh, what will happen when they come to Downlands, they will experience more specialist teachers, specialists in, in their individual subject, uh, and five lessons a day. And it will be the students that will move from lesson to lesson. Um, students will be expected to bring equipment, books, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, please don't worry about that. All will be explained in each particular subject, what the requirements are on every particular day and every lesson. Please bear in mind, however, that we are a school that sets homework. Uh, homework is an expectation, as is the fact that it should be completed on time, and we would really appreciate your support with that. So what your child needs to remember is that all teachers are different. Uh, we'll have different personalities, uh, but however, uh, all teachers will be applying the same kind of classroom expectations and behaviour policy. So when it comes to sitting in class, uh, each lesson will have uh, basically a seating plan. Uh, so your child may be sat according to that seating plan uh, next to different people, depending on those particular uh, lessons. Uh, one of the things we also would encourage your child to bring with them is a bottle of water, a plastic bottle with water in it, in order that they can rehydrate uh, during the day. Uh, our behaviour policy um, will ensure uh, that hopefully your child will be given the rewards they deserve and hopefully not the sanctions they deserve. So this key stage three um, is a year seven, eight and nine. Now, the most important thing uh, perhaps for you to remember here is to do with modern foreign languages. In modern foreign languages, uh, students are allocated a language when they come into the school. That will either be French, German or Spanish. Uh, they will study that and that will be the language they will be able to master and then carry on with at GCSE. So there will be eight tutor groups in year seven. Uh, for timetabling purposes, they are split into two halves. So depending on which half your child is in, they may be doing one lesson of worlds. The other half of the group may be doing a totally different lesson at that time. Most subjects are initially taught in tutor groups. Some subjects are taught in different groups and mixed ability groups, uh, and the different groupings will depend upon the subject. And again, that will be fully explained to your child in each particular subject. If you wish to find out more uh, in advance of September about the curriculum that is being offered to your child, if you go to our website, uh, the curriculum section, you will find some more information on each particular subject uh, giving you some kind of detail as to the topics that will be covered and some of the skills that will be covered. So an example here is art. This will give you some idea of what to expect in year seven in art. And as you can see, there may be further information about year eight and so on and so forth. So each subject that your child should study, there should be some further information for you there. There should also be a breakdown of what to expect term by term. Uh, as you can see on this slide here, this is basically saying what may happen in term one in the autumn. Bear in mind, of course, this this is this is this could change, uh, and as such, we will update the website accordingly. So I mentioned earlier, homework. Um, this is normally set weekly or fortnightly. This 
The frequency of it will depend on how often your child does that particular subject. So your child is more likely to receive homework if they are in a lesson that they might have four times a week and less likely uh, to have homework, shall we say, if they're doing a subject where they only see that teacher once every fortnight. Now, the frequency of that may increase across the key stage as the expectations uh, and the challenge increases across that particular key stage. Thing to take note, please, is that homework is important, but what we're looking at is, is the well-rounded student. Uh, hopefully they can get a balance of completing homework and also relaxation and chilling time. And again, hopefully as schools open up more in the near future, what we're hoping is to have a full uh, program of extracurricular activities that your child can take part in and enjoy. Equipment. Um, there will be expectations in different subjects of what equipment your child may need. Each particular subject uh, will explain uh, to the children what is required of them, when it's required of them. It may seem daunting at first, but they get used to it very, 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 very quickly. If I can refer you to a bit that says reading books, please can you ensure that your child has an appropriate reading book that they can bring. Uh, when well, they may be asked to take part in private reading time during tutor time and other lessons. Very, very rarely nowadays, uh, your child may get a, a letter or they may have a reply slip. Um, if you give it to your child to hand in, please could you check their bag that it's not been left at the bottom underneath a uh, three week old PE kit and two week old uh, food technology stuff. Um, nowadays, most communication will be by email and website. So we will contact you there. Please uh, check the website for any relevant updates. So it is very, 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 very usual uh, that you and your child will have some kind of worries and anxieties uh, about starting a new school. Uh, various things like getting lost, forgetting teachers' names, forgetting equipment and stuff. All of this is totally, totally, totally normal. Um, what we do is we have a particular kind of induction program for Year 7, and we basically support Year 7 um, going around to the school initially in each particular lesson, break times, lunch times, to try and make sure their transition is as seamless as possible. Please understand that your child is a priority to us. They are like the Amazon Prime students in our school. They are our top priority. However, we hope, unlike Amazon Prime, we will not leave your child in a hedge or in somebody else's greenhouse. Um, thank you very much for listening. I really look forward to seeing you hopefully in September. Uh, take care. Bye now. Hello. My name is Graham Odlin. I'm assistant head teacher here at Downs Community School. I oversee areas of um, support, behaviour, attendance, special educational needs, safeguarding, inclusion. And what I'm going to talk to you about today, briefly, is the structure of that support within the school. Uh, how we do it, and uh, some of the things that you can expect from us. Um, shame we're not doing it in person because we do get the opportunity to answer some of your questions. We are, however, setting up a frequently asked page. If you send your questions into that email address, which I put on the letter, we will put together that frequently asked questions page, put it back on the website, and hopefully address some of the thoughts you have and the questions you would have asked us. Right, I will now share, go through a short presentation I put together. Nearly they're off, nearly off your hands, but not completely. Yes, they're coming to big school and they think they are now uh, ready for it. I'm, I'm sure they are, um, but they're not totally off on their own without any stabilizers. We have a number of people here, unlike the primary schools, who are a bit more limited in the number of staff that they can employ in different roles. Secondary schools have bigger support structure teams. A lot of teaching assistants in primary schools, probably per, per pupil, fewer teaching assistants, but there are lots of other roles that are required at secondary schools. So down there, you can see the form tutor, very important person. I'll speak a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, although Mr. McStokes will say some more. Pastoral support officer in each year group, head of year. And then we have other people. Um, 
pupil premium support officer, uh, so helping out some of those additional needs, learning mentors for uh, the year groups that help with um, coursework organisation and some structure for those who are struggling to do that sort of thing, as well as a bit of catch up for those as well that might have missed things. Um, teaching assistants, as I said, core department teaching assistants, these are people specialising in a particular area and they have expertise in that area uh, to help the students uh, there when they're working there. Um, behaviour support officers, uh, many of the children, most of the children at some stage will have aspects they're struggling with. And again, our support officers within the behavioural structure help them see through those things. I am head of safeguarding, what's called the designated safeguarding lead. But as you, I told you, I do other things too. We have got a dedicated person dealing with the safeguard issues that are coming up in a day to day. Yes, safeguard, but also some of the other emotional things that happen when children are um, go through tough times. Ms. Goodman also uh, um, works with those too. School counsellor on site, uh, if, if we think it's appropriate, if this child is um, willing, you can't force a child to see a counsellor, but if they are willing, um, we have a counsellor team too. Uh, Build-up team, that's when they're a little bit older, preparing them for uh, exams and assessments, uh, a team of people that work with them. And again, when they're a little bit older, college work related, guidance coordinator who will help move them on to the next stage. Mr Stokes has spoken and will speak a little bit about who the form judges are. Key person, key person in this in it for your child. They greet the child at the start of every day. Uh, and that's by design so they always have that same person they come into. Very important uh, for their building of the relationship, their feeling of identity in the school, their feeling of connection with the school. A key person for your child. They will go through with your child for the five years whilst they're here, the member of staff stays here, as indeed will the um, uh, pastoral support officer and the head of year. That's a key feature of our pastoral provision, that continuity and developing the relationship. The form tutor in the morning will go through the, obviously registering for the day, the day to day information, um, uh, general answer, any questions for the young person, check that they've got what they need. You send them out the house, you know, suitably uh, attired with all the equipment, on the way to school, sometimes it can be a little bit it can be a little dishevelled, but uh, so the form tutor will sort of pop them back together again if necessary, uh, make sure they've got everything they need and send them on for their day. So they essentially sort of reaffirm the things and sort out anything that's happened on the way that needs to be done. They also, and as I say, it's very important sense of developing this sense of belonging for your child to know that they belong somewhere in the school. They belong to the school, but there's a special sort of group of people within the school. In many ways, I talk to the form tutors about becoming the, the school parent for, the, for your child. And um, so that doing activities together with the tutor group, um, when we have our sports days and things like that, they go as a tutor group and it's sense of identity within that team. And they, as I say, they are that familiar face. You will get to meet them, hopefully, in the um, in our six weeks in um, parents' care, um, carers' consultation evening. Um, so, as I say, important person. They then go off, and after doing the registration period, they get then go off and teach around the school. Um, but for that first twenty minutes of the day, that's the that's the intention. They're building up that connection with your child. Much is often said about school rules and structures uh, that are in schools and complicated. Try to keep essentially our expectations simple. Um, we have them on one page in the, in the classrooms and they fall into these three categories uh, which we talk about. Whenever we're discussing with a young person about how we behave, what we do, it's about being ready as in ready for the lesson, you know, correctly equipped, attired, um, done any work that's necessary in advance of the lesson, and then they're on time to the school and to the lesson. If the, if the young person can do that, they're, they're ready to do the learning. Respectful, as, you, as, you, as, as in the name, they respond to others respectfully throughout school, listen and follow instructions from the staff, they're kind to people uh, and their behaviours, and they look after the, the building, the fabric, like, you know, they put the litter in the bin, uh, and it's just a sort of behaving you know, as a respectable sort of citizen member of the community. That's all we have there. And then safe. Obviously, all their actions we want to be uh, safe so they don't harm others, don't place others in dangers, don't do anything that could be a danger to other people. So, whilst there are many things 
the young person could do, which might essentially transgress one of those, the, the basic principle and the language, if you like, that we use is that be ready, be respectful, be safe. Uh, and with that, working within those parameters, uh, a student will be very successful and have no problem. Daily routines. I say this, and uh, I appreciate I'm teaching granny to suck eggs, uh, and uh, make, I make an apology for that. I'm not telling you how to sort of parent, or that, but there, I'm just going to point out some things to you that have a specific impact in school. So washing and cleaning and teeth, yeah, I know we get the kids to do it, but um, I'm, I put that in there because um, it's about the social integration and Kids sometimes, student children sometimes can be really harsh on it as well. And those sort of things, the freshness of breath, the high personal hygiene, help maintain their social integration. And that's what you want as well as we do. Um, fueling up, they need to be fueled to work, to operate. Um, uh, they need organising in that, don't they? Uh, so... Yeah, making sure that they've, they've had something to eat before they come to school, uh, that the lunch is all ordered, that they have that. And also that they have uh, fluid throughout the day. They have their waters, to, to water to drink, to keep them hydrated. Um, we notice that, you know, their energy levels, their concentration levels all uh, peak and trough throughout the day, as I suppose ours do as well. Uh, and whilst we don't want them to rush and go and get the highs and the sugar and the caffeine, because that accentuates the up and down, higher you go up with the caffeine and that, the lower you fall on either side. So it's about keeping that water and a, a level of fuel intake to keep their energy and concentration levels up so they don't flack throughout the day. Uh, it's, it's a big change from secondary school. They're on the way, they're moving around the school lesson to lesson, so it's physically more demanding uh, in movement alone, uh, going around a secondary school to what it is in a primary school. Then uh, after school, it's a question of, yeah, OK, do keep their activities, their hobbies, their interests, keep it very much on the agenda. When they get older, they'll have more work demands, I'm sure. But it's important that you keep those activities, hobbies and, and the, it, on the agenda because that very much um, contributes to their self-esteem, their self-worth. If they're still doing those hobbies, hobbies and things they've done for some time, they'll be quite good at them. And that nurtures, fuels their self-esteem, it carries them, a bit of self-esteem carries them through the tougher times when they need a bit more resilience. So I always stress it's important that they keep their hobbies and things going uh, for them. Organisation-wise, it's always, we know what it's like in our homes and we're very busy, but in the morning, it's even busier. So sort of having packed our bags the night before, so the roughing all we've got is there, ready to go in the morning. It really does, it really does help. Um, and it's one less thing to try and pack into the morning. Um, and then good sleep. Of course, the students that have not slept, like any of us, if we've not slept through the very well through the night, we're not at our best the next day. Doing all we can to make sure we get the best night's sleep is important. Um, and as you know, that means we are not going to be on screens all night or having no screen stimulation just before we try and get to sleep. We know what it's like for us if we're you know, doing some work or something late at night and then trying to get to sleep. It doesn't happen very easily. So getting them to, to a wind down before going to sleep and getting them to bed, having that bedtime and sleep time uh, there so that they get adequate rest for the next day. It's important. As I say, you know that, but if it, I'm just sort of pointing out how it affects them in the day. And I'm really keen on them maintaining social inclusion and then being in the best place they can to do be, be successful in the school. But this is brilliant. This is you. Uh, really, we do. You do all what people don't see. It's um, a parent's lot. We put in all this. It's going on at, at home, all that support network, and then they're out there. Uh, it's a bit like the, um, if you like the football team, the England football team. So much goes in behind the scenes to have got those players to where they are today. Uh, and it's still going on behind the scenes to support them to do their role. That's you. You're the support network behind. You're pedaling away like furiously to keep them, you're picking them up when they when they fall a bit. But you're maintaining that sort of work. And to be honest with you, my, my children are a little bit older, but it goes on. You need to st still keep going there, still keep scaffolding, still keep picking them up, and still keep talking about moving forward, being success, and they and a can-do attitude.
it's a it's a tough call a uh, bit apparent as you know uh, but it's the rewards are, are there homework can often be a little bit of a source of um conflict quite frankly in a, in in the house uh getting a structure for it will offset a lot of that if you've got a timetable a routine where it happens it's like anywhere else once that routine is established is that you get less opposition and it happens but any of our we try and have the healthy routines don't we where we're going to do a bit of exercise or we'll eat this if we can get there if we can really stick to it and embed the routine then all of a sudden it well all of a sudden over time that becomes our modus operandi so it's happened so that's what i'm suggesting to you yes it's a step up possibly from primary school other homework but have that routine the place where they work how they work um and it's and and in it it's classic we see it in school if you say do you understand you ask a child do you know what you've got to do they say yes uh, you understand it yes they don't or may not so uh, smart questions what do you have to do how have you done that oh show me that and then you're actually going to elicit a response that demonstrates whether they do understand do know what they do so um uh through there uh, we still it's it's hard to forget that sort of thing but even class tomorrow have you, have you got it yeah actually that's they're always going to give that response pretty much so it's okay show me um Colours, I've done a spreadsheet with different colour backgrounds thing. Try and get, if they are working on the screen or something, make it more interesting for them, highlighting words, and encourage the lists, encourage them being organised, uh, encourage them to prepare, to be a preparation, spider diagrams. A little bit of preparation certainly gives a, a better outcome uh, for their work uh, with that. Encourage them to reflect on it. Self-assessment is important too. Um, encourage them to test you. Uh, it could be, um, sorry, uh, or, or you testing them. Bit of a, you know, so a bit of a game going with it is good. And of course, whenever they do, when we do see them doing these things, and they got their routine, praise it, catch them being good. I mean, it's always, I mean, obviously we all know it's better to be on the uh, positive and the praising rather than having to sort of be, you know, threatening or chiving, not that we should threaten, but you say, if you're not doing that, you're not having this. So easy to come out. It's much better if we catch them being good and reward them when they do do the right things. Um, concentration, uh, different people prefer different things. Some people do like to twiddle and doodle when they're looking at things. Uh, static, been in meetings and adults, you know, they doodle. It, it helps them listen. And some kids are, are like that as well. So can do that. Um, uh, not too much of the stimuli around so that their concentration is on the thing you want them to do as opposed to other stimuli going about them as well you know, tvs and things which would distract them they're only human they're going to notice what else is going around they have that ability to do that as humans but actually we want them focusing on the task in hand so reducing the stimuli going on around them that was that really helps them too and before you know it Hopefully we will see the current year 11 or the 11s we've just lost uh, let, that moved on from us um, at Plumpton. That is Plumpton in five years ago. Uh, there they are, their prom. And in five years' time, that's where we, uh, your, your, your young people will be, which is a tremendous thing to see them having gone through uh, school successfully and reached that stage and, of course, receiving their grades. So uh, it is, of course, it is a journey. It is a journey for them, and um, I hope that you um, enjoy it as best you can. Uh, but I wanted to point out to you today that there is a support structure here. There are lots of people that are here working with them. I know you're at the, down the end of the school gates. You can't get in so easily as you would maybe with primary school, but there's a team here that will support and look after your child. Thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Mr Stokes, I am the year head for year seven and we'll take your children through downlands to the end of year 11 and look after them in terms of pastoral care. Um, I know many of you already and I look forward to getting to know uh, the rest of you over the next five years. Um, my role uh, only works because of the great team I have around me, um, so I will introduce the people that will be working with the students um, hopefully over the next five years. Um, most important of whom is uh, Miss, Mrs. Duala, who is the pastoral support officer for year seven. Um, Mrs. Cobb, who's the pupil premium um, support officer 
for years uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 um, and we'll be um, working with some of the students in the year group um, and of course the tutors. Now we don't know, you won't know the tutor groups yet um, but they're being put together now, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment but the tutors who will be with us um, this year and hopefully into the future here's Mr uh, Wardrobe, uh, it is Miss Bridge, it is Miss Austin, um, it is Mr Humphrey, it is Miss Ray, it is Miss Groves, um, it is Miss Green and Mrs Brand who are sharing a tutor group and it is Miss Bitme. As you'll be aware, Mrs Dwala and I visited most of our feeder primary schools. Um, it was lovely to meet your children, we had a nice time, they asked us lots of questions. Um, mainly to do detentions, but um, I hope that I answered all the questions for them. Um, we couldn't visit every school because um, some children, there's just one coming from that school, about 17 of those schools. Um, but hopefully we've spoken to all the teachers um, by the time you see this. So we'll have details about all the pupils coming to us. And that's how we put our tutor groups together. We are reliant on the primary schools to give us information about ability and other things, but also friendship groups, etc. I have to make balanced tutor groups because they'll be working together for the year in most lessons. Um, and so, although we take lots of things into account, um, please be aware it's very difficult making eight tutor groups out of 240 pupils as balanced as possible. Um, so not all requests um, I can actually adhere to, I'm afraid. But I, I hope that we will have our tutor groups completely balanced by the time you get that information at the beginning of September. Unfortunately, the transition days can no longer take place this term because of the COVID, number of COVID cases. So we will have a transition day, but it won't be until um, the 6th of September, COVID willing. Um, and that's when all the year sevens will come in and they'll be put in their tutor groups and they have a day getting to know the school. Mrs. Dwyer and I do intend to put a video together, however, just doing a tour of the school, which we'll post on the website um, for everyone to see, hopefully by next week, just to give those who haven't visited Downlands an idea of where everything is and just to, you know, to think about over the summer and so it's not completely new to everyone when they come here at the start of the new term. Obviously, it's not ideal not being able to meet and talk to you and um, for you to ask the questions that I'm sure you have. Um, but if you do have any questions about pastoral care at Downlands, please um, use the um, email address that's been provided and I'll endeavour to answer as many of those questions as possible. So it just uh, leaves me to um, look forward to seeing your children in September um, and meeting you over the course of year seven. Have a lovely summer and take care.